chapter, I read Acts 1, verses 48. And here it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, And he you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 6. And when they, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. So we receive the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses. And that's one of the things that he was promised us to, to do. One of the things that he, 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 he does through us, that we are witnesses. So being a witness means you're you're there, and uh, people see what's going on in your life, and so that's like a witness to them. And then, and the witness of the Holy Spirit is He's with you. And so we're gonna go to John sixteen seventeen, but I'm gonna after that I'm gonna read um, fifteen through sixteen. But the scripture I want is uh, John sixteen seven. John 16, 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. This is Jesus talking. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But, I, if, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. So he's sending him back to us. In, in this one, the, the, the Greek... Um, Concordance um, Comforter is 3875, and it says uh, Parakletos is an intercessor, a consoler, advocate, and comforter. And then number one, it says, is summoned, called to one's side, especially called to one's aid. So he, Jesus sent him back to be, to be on our side. And to be our aid when we need him. And it says, One who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, counsel for defense, legal assistance, and advocate. And that's what Jesus is for us too. But he sent the Holy Spirit to do that for us. Since he's at the right hand of the Father. So he pleads for us there. And then the Holy Spirit is here with us. And then it says, One who pleads another's cause with another with one, an intercessor, so he intercedes for us too, of Christ in his exaltation of God's right, at God's right hand, pleading with God the Father for the pardon of our sin. And in the widest sense, a helper, succor, aider, and assistant. So that's what the Holy Spirit is to us. He's our helper, he's our succor, our aider, and our assistant. And then it says, of the Holy Spirit destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles after his ascension to the Father, to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth and give them the divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. So the Holy Spirit is there for us because he sent them to the, to the disciples and when the disciples were out, they did, you know, they ministered all over the, the um, Middle East, over in Jerusalem, Samaria, back then, that's what they were called. But now it's probably Iraq, Iran, all in that area, you know, they went out and ministered with the help of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being by their side every step of the way. I mean, there's times they didn't know what to say, and the Holy Spirit helped them say what they needed to say. And so I'm kind of going to go over a little bit of the scriptures. 
Um, John 16, I'm going to go now to back to verse 5, and I'm going to read the whole, um, all the way to 16. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asked me whither goes thou. This is Jesus talking to us. And it says, But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus sent him back to us. And then verse 8, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin through us. And of the righteousness and of judgment. And he's going to do it through us. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. So the Holy Spirit's going to be our guide. And he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come so if we're being led by the holy spirit we should hear what jesus is speaking to us and then he will show us things to come so if we're being led by the holy spirit we should have these going on in our life and in verse 14, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So he's going to show us things that will glorify Jesus. We're not going to be glorified. It's going to be Jesus that's glorified. And because we're helped and aided by the Holy Spirit. Verse 15, All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and sh shall show it unto you. A little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. So it's the Holy Spirit, even though we never saw Jesus, he's going to show us who Jesus is. So if we know who Jesus is, then we should know who the Father is. And that's how, and we got to get into the Word of God to know who Jesus was. And then that will reveal who the Father is because of what Jesus did. And then verse, uh, chapter 15, 26 to 27. It says, um, this is still Jesus talking. It says, but when the Comforter is come, whom I send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. So because the Holy Spirit was from the beginning, remember John 1.1, 1, 1, it, says, it says that uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, all things are made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was with the light of men. So, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, and, and also the Holy Spirit was already there. Even in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit was there. Let's go to Genesis 1, 2, 1. And, and it talks about how the Holy Spirit was there. Genesis 2, 1 says, Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Oh, it's one, two, sorry. I, I transpose. <laughs> and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So in, in your notes, correct that at the bottom page. It says Genesis 2, 1. It's Genesis 1, 2. I transposed the number. And then in Genesis 6, 3. Let's 
it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. So it says that he's, his spirit is in us all the way till when we, when we, you know, die. He's, he's with us all the way to the end. But, but that's what it says, you know, his spirit is with us always. And then let's go back to, um, John 14, 15 to 18. It says, the Holy Spirit, you, you, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus still talking to us. And I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. See there? He says, forever. He never leaves you. The only one that leaves him is probably us. We're the one that leaves him. We forget him. We forget that he's there to be by our side to help us in everything that we do. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So people that are not Christians, that are in the world, they don't know the Holy Spirit until they ask Jesus to come into their heart and then the Holy Spirit comes. But it's the Spirit that draws them too. The Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus and and it says remember he dwelleth you and shall be in you in 18 I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you so Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to be with us to comfort us and then um, remember Jesus prayed to the Father that he should give us another comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit and he's going to be with us forever. And Jesus was our example. Okay, let's go back to John 14 and then verse 26 and 27. It says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So maybe you have forgotten some of the promises that God spoke to you. Maybe through another person or through the word. There were some things that you heard that you knew that was for you. It says the Holy Spirit will bring all those things to your remembrance. Whatsoever the Lord has said to you. He may have promised you things. There's a lot of promises in the Word. And, and we got to remember those things. And ask the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance those things. That way, because He's our aid, He's our comforter, He's our advocate. And He's by our side. He's be, supposed to be by our side, but we don't, we don't ask Him. We don't call unto Him. And then verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So a lot of things are going on in the world right now. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. To give us peace in the midst of the storm. To give us peace in the midst of everything that's going on. Because His peace, the world cannot give us peace. And it says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. Because the Holy Spirit is in us, with us. He's there to help us. He's there to guide us. He's there to tell us and, and bring to remembrance those things God has promised us. And so we need to rely on Him. And even myself, you know, i got to ask Him sometimes, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me, guide me. And um, let me give you some examples or testimonies of how the Holy Spirit has 
helped me and guided me. Um, I mean, he, he helps you with even the little things in your life. You think it's the little things. Um, there was a time in 1994 when I was moving and moving into a house. I needed boxes. Back that back then, they didn't have like you know like Walmart didn't have the boxes for you to put stuff in. Now they sell boxes for you for uh, packing. They didn't have that, and so I left from the house with my daughters, and we and it's like the Holy Spirit. Like I said, Holy Spirit, I need boxes, and uh, I just heard the word. I mean, Target. <laughs> I mean. That sounds funny to me, but, I mean, that's how the Holy Spirit, He's there to aid us. Because we, we need something. That's just, you know, that's just like common thing, you know, it's not like spiritual. But that's what I needed at the time, so He says Target. But the Holy Spirit had another plan for me too. When I went to Target, I ran into a, a sister in the Lord, and she needed prayer, so... I was, I was there in the middle aisle and we were praying with her and I was counseling her and praying with her. And just then, one of the workers walks by with a, a, a cartload of boxes already broken down. And I, and I said, hold on. I said, ma'am, can you please, um, what are you going to do with those boxes? I'm throwing them away. I said, can I take them? She says, okay. And all those boxes were, that were in that cart, I used every one of them, and I didn't need another box when I was um, packing. And that's how the Holy Spirit works. He helps us. And then let's let's go to a little bit more spiritual. But, you know, there was spirit in there because I got to minister to a sister. And there was one time, this was when Kmart was still around. I think God always takes me to department stores to pray for people sometimes in the buffet line that's happened before too but I was I went I was next door to a, a, a Kmart and I, I I had got my hair cut like two doors down but when I walked out it's like the Holy Spirit was prompting me to go into Kmart for what I didn't know, so I just okay, okay, Holy Spirit, I'll go with, I'll go, go in there. Then I'm just, you know, didn't know, I, I didn't know what I was there for. Then I'm just looking around, looking at clothes, just kind of browsing. And here, this um, um, older white lady was there, and this, and I just we started conversation, and she's telling me that. Her daughter was on drugs and, and and she was in rehab but was home again. But then she walked away and she was really worried about her. And so I kind of ministered and prayed with her. And I said, we just arrest your granddaughter right now by the Spirit in Jesus' name that she's going to come home and you won't have to worry about it. So that's the reason why the Holy Spirit wanted me to go to Kmart to minister to that lady. I don't I don't remember her name. I just remember the story. And there's 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 a lot of times, you know, the Holy Spirit you know brings to remembrance. Okay, so there was a word spoken to me back in 1993 maybe. But that wasn't fulfilled until 2005. But also, the Lord had given me a dream, but it wasn't like a, a big dream. It was just like a few seconds. So the word that was given to me, and then the dream that I had, it was fulfilled until 2005. And the word was that I was going to go to a people that I didn't know their language, and that my trip was going to be all paid for. And it's not going to be in the United States. It was going to be outside of the country. And so I, I got an opportunity from my, where I work to go to Germany. And during the time that they told me I was going to go to Germany, 
my little brother was in the Philippines at the time. So this is how the Holy Spirit works. He was there ministering and, and he met a German lady. And at the time I didn't know what part of Germany I was going yet. They were just told me I was going to Germany. And so my little brother at that time, you know, there was just email, no text messaging because we didn't have that that capability. So it was just email. So he was emailing me and I was emailing him back. And so he's telling me that, and I told him, I'm going to Germany. And he goes, well, there's a German lady here. She wants to meet you when you go there, but we want to know what part of Germany you're going. So the week that they were supposed to fly back, and, and then I found out I was going to Frankfurt, Germany. And that sister lives like an hour south of Frank Frankfurt in a little town called Biblia. That's the Holy Spirit for you. That's in Spanish that means Bible. And so anyway, it got arranged. We talked about it. And so he gave me her information. And then before I left, the Holy Spirit told me to prepare a message. So I did. And what happened was my 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 the word that was spoken over me, my my the company I worked for, they paid for all my expenses to go to Germany. But when I got there, I met a sister, German lady, and the first day when we got there was like a Sunday afternoon and I tried calling the number but the person to answer was, later on I found was her husband that didn't speak English so I'm like okay I, I don't know German so there's no way I can communicate so I'm like kind of thinking okay how am I going to communicate with this German guy <laughs> and, and tell him hey you know you're at the time I didn't know it was his wife that I was going to meet so, and then I went to the job site where I was supposed to go, and there's a a Christian German that I met that works there, and he, when we were introducing ourselves, he got you can kind of tell that he got all excited, and I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And and when we went to lunch, he went with me, and he told me that he prayed, he's a Christian, he prayed that he would meet a Navajo, a Native American Navajo, he said, because they used, they had an exchange program, a uh, culture exchange, and the Navajos used to come, but the Navajos that went were doing the traditional dances and stuff, so he prayed to God that he would meet a Navajo that was a Christian, and that's where I came into the picture. But the dream that I had, that German brother of mine, Heinz Kohler, is his name. I remember his name. He fulfilled that dream that I had. So in my dream, I thought this person came running and says, I got them on the phone. They speak English. I don't have to translate for you. But he said, I will, he, said he would help me. I told him about what was going on. He says, okay, I'll help you. So when I came back from lunch, he came running. That dream was fulfilled there. And so then I talked to the um, German sister. Her name is Ursula. And so I got to talk to her. And then the next day was Tuesday. And we that afternoon we found out that the next day they were going to have an all plant meeting and they want they don't want us there because we're out kind of like we're not from that area we're not from there so they didn't want us to hear what they were talking about so they told us you guys get to leave at one o'clock tomorrow on tuesday and so so it worked out to where sister ursula picked me up and she told me she says you have your bible i said yes and she's you have a message i said yes she goes, well, you're coming to my house church and you're going to minister tonight. And then she interpreted it for me and we prayed for people. People got healed, set free, delivered. And then afterwards her husband told me that the message that I gave 
was exactly what they had in the men's conference the week before that I explained it to them. I explained it to them, what they were talking about, what it meant. But I don't remember what it was that I shared with them now because that was 2005. This is what, 2021. And so that's how the Holy Spirit works. You have to rely on Him. You let Him guide you. That's why Jesus sent Him to us to help us. And He will bring all these things I said to remembrance. So those are just some of the things. There's there's more that I've experienced with the Holy Spirit. And so I believe um, that we need to start going back and and asking Him for help. Asking Him to guide us. Asking Him to be our advocate. Maybe there's things you that happen and you don't know what to say. Tell Him, hey, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to say. Put the words in my mouth to say it. And so, and also, like, on, there was one time I was on a reservation. Me and Benny were ministering to this lady up in Sweetwater. And we were talking with her, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit told me, ask her, who is Rose? So I asked her, who's Rose? And she broke down because she was questioning if she was really saved or not, if the God really loved her. And so the Holy Spirit told me to tell her, who is Rose? And I said, who's Rose? And she, she broke down and started crying. I said, God loves you. That's why he knows your middle name. <laughs> She told us that was her middle name and that her father had named all his daughter's middle names flower names. Iris and I forget the other ones, but hers was Rose. And see, that's how the Holy Spirit can, can minister through you to another person and set them free and, and guide them. And He will guide you to guide them into the, the right direction or to be set free. And so we need to rely on Him. Let Him guide us. Let Him take us where we're supposed to go. And let's go back to um, Jesus is our example. And let's go to John 1, 32, 34. Back to John. John 1. And verses um, 32 to 34. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. This is John the Baptist. He's talking about Jesus. Verse 33, I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Verse 34, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So John didn't know who Jesus was, but God told him that he would see the, the dove ascending, up, or the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove up, upon Jesus, then that he would know that that was Jesus. And so he says, I bear record. He saw it. When you see something, there's no denying, there's no lying about it. Because it'll shake you to the core. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. So Jesus is the, he's the one that baptizes us with the Holy Ghost. And then Matthew there's uh, different accounts in Matthew, Mark, and then there's Luke for about Jesus' baptism and how the Holy Ghost came upon him. But I'm going to read the one in Matthew because that gives it a little bit more information than the other two. So let's go to Matthew chapter 3, 16 and 17. <clears throat> then, um, excuse me.
Matthew 3, <clears throat> 16 and 17. <clears throat> And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, and lightning upon him. Thank you. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So God was well pleased with Jesus. For being um, baptized in water and in, in, in the Holy Spirit. And it was like lightning upon him, it says. So the Holy Spirit is like lightning. If a lightning hits something, it hits it right on. It won't miss it. So the lightning of the Holy Spirit hits us. And it's meant to hit the mark on all of us and if you look at lightning it's a, sometimes a big bolt so if that came upon Jesus that's upon us too remember it says that that uh, I kind of mentioned it but it was in John it says they're the sons of thunder when you know, there's thunder there's always lightning <laughs> so we're we're thunderbolts of lightning for Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we hit the mark because Jesus says his word always hits the mark. In um, Matthew 3, I already read that, 16 and 17. And let's go to Mark 4, 1 through 11. And it says, Then after Jesus was baptized, then was Jesus led up, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And we had, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Three, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And remember, the Holy Spirit is on Jesus now. And then it says, verse 5, The devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So Jesus was tempted, but the Holy Spirit was upon him and with him now, so I'm sure the Holy Spirit helped him, aided him, because God sent the Spirit to him. And, and then he asked God for the Holy Spirit to come upon us, to help us. So it kind of like... God, God helped his son, and then the son helps us. And then the Holy Spirit is here now to help us because Jesus sent him back to us, sent him to us. And then the Holy Spirit will come. It says, Acts um, chapter 1, 7 and 8. And it says, um, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then verses 2, 1 through 4.
it says, uh, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And um, that was um, the Jews. But if you go to Acts 10, this is when the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 47. It says, The Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we're, the, we're called the Gentiles. The Jewish nations were the Jews and we're the, we're the Gentiles. And in Everybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile, and it was poured out on them, and he pours out on us too. And it says, verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues and, ma and, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? So, we can't say it's not for the Gentiles, it's not for the Navajos, it's not for for the Germans because they did bad to the to the Jewish people. Nope, it says all Gentiles. You all nations can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then um let's go to Psalms fifty one. I'm just gonna share a little bit of um, scriptures. That kind of talks a little bit about what the Holy Spirit does in us. In um, Psalms 51, 11, this was uh, David when he was repenting of his sin with Bathsheba. He actually cried unto the Lord and it says, it says He said, cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. So David was pleading and asking God not to take the Holy Spirit from him. And we should be doing that too. We should be pleading, Lord, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. And then we're going to go to Zechariah 4, 6. And there, there's more scriptures in the Bible, but these are just some, some of the ones I wanted to share with you. And if you go... And you can search, if you go to Google and say Holy Spirit Scriptures, it'll give you a list of all the scriptures that where the Holy Spirit is mentioned. So Zechariah in uh, verses 4 and 6, Zechariah is one of the, the smaller uh, prophets in the Old Testament. You got Okay, Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So it's by his spirit that we can do great exploits for Jesus. It's not, it's not because of uh, our might, nor by our part, but by the Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then let's go to Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14. It says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you're being led by the Holy Spirit, you're a son of God. You don't have to question that. And then verse 26 in the same chapter, it says, 
Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So our infirmities, that means a lot. Infirmities mean you're sick. It could mean uh, disease. It could mean, um, remember, the un incurable diseases. But we can cry out into the Holy Spirit and, and say, Holy Spirit, help. Help me. Help me with this infirmity. Help me to get over it. I just remember a sister um, that gave me a testimony. I'm not going to say a name, but she was having issues with her female parts. And, and, and um, she, she asked the Holy Spirit, okay, Lord, what shall I do? And, and the Spirit spoke to her say, take it out. And so she did come to find out in the middle of her womb there was cancer. So they took it all out and now she's cancer free because the Holy Spirit directed her to take it out. And the doctor didn't want to because of her age, but th then she said, well, if you're not going to do it, I'll go to another doctor. Because that's what the Spirit told her to do, to take it out. And you know what? She's pain-free now. Praise the Lord. So he can help you with your infirmities. And then let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, 10 to 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 14. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So there's, there's, there's some things that are deep in God, but the Holy Spirit will reveal it to us. And it says, 11, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. So our spirit, we know about ourselves, but the deep things, God's spirit knows. Some of the stuff maybe we have hidden or stuffed down, we don't want to remember. He remembered those. But, and it says, uh, it says, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So the spirit of God is going to reveal to us the things we don't know about God. In verse 12, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13, Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, in order for us to st understand spiritual things that are of God, we have to have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and He will teach us and reveal those things to us from the Word of God. And then let's go to same um, book, First Corinthians three sixteen. It says, "Know you not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you?" So the Spirit dwells in us. Where in the Old Testament it says it was upon them. So he, the Spirit of God dwelleth in us, in you. And then verse. Uh, Chapter 6, First Corinthians, we're still in First Corinthians, chapter 6, 19 and 20. It says, What, now you know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own. So we should be the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, he owns our body. 
because that this says, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. So our body even belongs to God. The Holy Spirit should be there. He should reside there. We shouldn't be kicking him out. And then verse um, 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. So your little spirit, your spirit is God's too. But the spirit of God should be dwelling in us. And we should give him free reign in our body. And then go to Second Thessalonians. That will be the last verse. We'll end with that. Second Thessalonians 2.13. And Second Thessalonians 2.13. It says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So the Holy Spirit sanctifies us to believe the truth. So let the Holy Spirit sanctify you to believe the truth of God's Word and not man's wisdom, but of God's wisdom. Let us get set free. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in us and guide us and set us free in the different things that we're struggling with because it says He sanctifies us. He's the one that helps us. Let Him be our guide. Let Him be our, our counselor. Let Him be our advocate. If we rely on Him, we'll have peace. Remember it says we have peace because it's not the peace of this world, but He gives us peace. Because the Father gave it to him, and Jesus gave it to us. And Jesus, if Jesus prayed to the Father to give us another comforter, that means it was very important, and Jesus promised that he would send them back when he went back to heaven, which he did. So now it is up to us to receive him, and then to allow him to guide us, to protect us, and to... To, um, you know, like he defends us too. So if you need defending, he can defend you. I remember there was a, there was a time when things were being said about me by another sister. And I was kind of like discouraged, but then I heard a word. Because those um, things that she was saying were not truth, but I didn't want to defend myself because of like, you know, it was just create more problem. And so I just prayed. I said, Holy Spirit, you know, help me. You know, this is what's going on. And I heard a message where somebody said, truth doesn't need to be defended. And so I didn't defend myself. I didn't say nothing. I just prayed. I prayed for the sister. And eventually she came to me and said, Forgive me for all the stuff that I said about you that were not true. So if if there's the Holy Spirit can help you defend you by giving you a word, which was, Truth does not need defense. So the word is truth, so we don't need to defend it. It defends itself, but we have to read it. And have the Holy Spirit reveal them to us. The deep, deep truths that God has in His Word. The Holy Spirit can reveal them to us. So, take that promise that Jesus gave you. Take it and receive it. And use it. Which is the Holy Spirit. Thank you all. And good night.